Oh, hi. This week, we're trying another PDF pattern dress that I'm very excited about. It's actually the dress I'm currently wearing, but I learned some weightlifting things yesterday and I'm not standing up again unless absolutely necessary. <laughs> I want to get stronger, but I am very much the opposite of that at the current moment, so it does not take much for me to be like, oh, oh my body hurts. But hopefully in the long run it'll help my body hurt less, because your girl has chronic pain all over the goddamn place. Anyways, I don't even know how to say the name of this pattern. I'll get into this more later, but I did accidentally end up doing everything in French, which is not a language I speak or read, but that is why the steps you're gonna see in my like lack of knowledge about what everything is saying is because it's a language I don't understand. But listen, I'm nothing if not stubborn. And I'm familiar enough with patterns that I could tell what was a sleeve piece, what was a bodice piece, what was a skirt piece. There were some buckwild looking pattern pieces for the bodice, but it was obvious with what the design looked like where those pieces went. Not necessarily how they go together, but at least like locale. And also all the instructions had little pictures, which is fairly common on patterns anyway. Although I guess not usually this many steps. So I'm very thankful if I was gonna find a pattern with a lot of photos, extensive detailed steps that it's the one that I can't read. Also a thing that made me laugh on the little diagrams that they have here is there's a sash bit that goes across the front but you kind of get to like turn a tube out as part of the bodice. It's it's kind of confusing at first but again diagrams help it make sense and this particular part of the sketch makes it look like a butthole so you know at least we can be mature about things right? <laughs> and I gotta say there was an extra element of adventurousness because of the language barrier but also it was just a cool process I've never seen before so I very much enjoyed this make. It was a lot of fun. So yes there are six total pieces for this. There's a front skirt, there's a back skirt, there's this wild looking bodice piece which was a little hard to cut out because it's so wide that you kind of get a crafty with your layout and you can't just cut everything with a fabric on fold like I often do and also at least for my size I needed 60 inch wide fabric this would not have worked if I had 45 inch wide fabric then the back bodice piece was cut out on fold looked pretty standard I went with the short sleeve option because y'all know me I do not fuck with long sleeves in general they have a time and a place a heat wave the week of Memorial Day is not the time for that <laughs> then similarly I cut the skirt patterns at the shortest length that they offered everything on me is always short so I don't know why I have done this with every dress pattern pattern I've recently tried out because they end up like a bit too short. With the bike shorts I always wear under dresses. I'm more than comfortable wearing this as like a comfy su southern dress? Summer dress. And then especially in the winter time if I'm wearing leggings and tights and stuff underneath I think this length is gonna be totally fine. The next version I want to make will be a little bit longer though. Oh, I'm so excited. And I think I'm gonna change the neckline as well but I'm very much getting ahead of myself. Okay there's also a facing piece for the neckline that is basically just a really skinny long I almost said triangle, rectangle. Listen, I'm filming this at the end of a three day holiday weekend, so I haven't gotten all that much sleep the past couple of days. And I would also say I haven't been like the pinnacle of health. So I think my choices are catching up with me. Not to say I went deep in the paint drinking or anything. I did brew beer, which was super fun. Meaning I mostly watched my friend boil water and add ingredients at certain times for like five hours. But that's all home brewing is, is literally watching a pot boil most of the time and like remembering to add stuff at a certain point in time and keeping shit clean. You can probably mess up a lot of steps in beer brewing, but not having things properly sanitized. That's what'll fuck shit up. But I digress. Okay bodice assembly. This was the part I didn't know how it was gonna work and I was super excited to get my teeth into this step. So this bodice piece has this big long extension and there's a slit you need to cut which I thought for sure I had marked but obviously I didn't so I went back with the pattern and cut those at the exact right angle too because there's like a depth and angle these slits need to be. It's not just a notch in the seam allowance. This is actually like a functional pivot point. So it needs to be more precise. So you line up those notches, the whole thing is folded in half, and you're basically making a sash, sewing that whole tube right sides together all the way down to the pointy end. And then I trimmed down some of the seam allowance, especially like the corner bit at the very ends of the sash. And then you just flip that whole thing right side out. It's a little tricky because it's not the widest sash. And then I also took a point turner to make sure that the seam allowance got pushed all the way out in those corner edges. And then this is also where I realized like, oh, this is where the gathering effect happens for the bust because it's not like there's darts or like princess seams happening here so I didn't know where that was going to come in but it looked kind of gathery on the photos of the dress I saw and that's what made me want to buy it in the first place. It looks like a very flattering design so this is how that effect happens. So cool. Though it looks insane when you're just kind of hanging the dress. You really have to be wearing it and like have it tied around properly to get a decent effect because it it just looks like some kind of alien otherwise. So once you have that done on 
both the left and right bodice pieces, you attach it down the center front. I really like this little diagram that, granted, I can't read the caption, but it seems to indicate like if you put a pin at the intersection of these two seams, it'll help make it look nice. Because that's always the goal, right? Is getting those perfect corners. You get the plus sign. That's always so satisfying. There's not a lot that I'm a stickler for with my own work as much as that particular type of thing. So yeah, after that, it was attaching the shoulder seams together. So super quick. I debated whether or not I was going to like press the seams open or serge stuff just because it's a mock-up and the other mock-ups I've been making, I've been fully finishing all the seams and then regretting it because I have a bunch of like alterations to make. Granted, this is a knit. It's always going to go a little bit smoother if it's a knit project in my experience. So in the long run, I'm glad I ended up serging stuff. Also, it's for stretchy material. I mean, I serge pretty much everything for my seam finishes, but particularly with knit fabrics, like some people just use the serger to build stuff like this. I can't. I have to have like actual stitching lines and I use the serger as a seam finish not as the assembly stitching, if that makes sense. I need I need more structural integrity to my garments. Okay, then it was on to the sleeves, which as you can see have like a little bit of volume up at the top. I don't tend to like things that make my shoulders look bigger, but this is like just the right amount of gathering that I'm okay with it. I'm not into that super poofy mutton or bishop sleeve. I just can't do it, unless it's for a costume or something, but this feels acceptable. I don't know if you can tell, but I really fucking like this dress. <laughs> okay, so to get this effect up at the top, there are five different notches you make along the curved edge of the sleeve pattern. One's for the center. There are notches indicating the front and back. Some patterns, the sleeves are symmetrical. Most aren't, just because you do a lot more in this direction than you do this direction, you know? There's also two notches, one either side between the front and back notch and that center notch. And that is where your gathering stitches start and end is between those two notches. It's like the middle third of the sleeve a lot of the time. So the way I like to gather and how the instructions do lay it out here from what I can tell <laughs> is always a basting stitch, like the longest setting on your sewing machine, straight stitch, make sure you have a tail at either end. So don't snip your threads super close, but I go in like maybe a quarter of an inch because I, I generally do half inch seam allowance. So that is also a factor you need to take into consideration. You want a gathering row either side of your normal seam allowance. So I go a quarter of an inch in and then I go three quarters of an inch in and I'm, I make them parallel. I start them at the same point and like try to keep them even. So I have my two gathering rows from notch to notch and then Again, my preference for gathering stuff is I do as much bunching as I can without breaking threads. We're not trying to make things like crazy taut or tight here, but especially when I'm zhuzhing things into place, I find it easier to let it out than like try to bunch it up again. Also, because when you are pulling, not ropes, I mean, they're like teeny tiny ropes, I suppose. But when you're pulling the threads, you need to either pull both top rows, like from the right side of the fabric or both from the wrong side of the fabric. I keep wanting to say top and bottom because my brain doesn't always process information the same way everybody else does. I wouldn't put it past someone that thinks like me to think they meant top and bottom, meaning like that quarter inch row is the top and the three fourths inch row is the bottom. So just to clarify, both rows on the right side or wrong side of the fabric, I don't think it matters. It's basically like both bobbin threads or both top threads. If you use different weight threads for this, a place I used to work always had higher strand count. What is it? The tex of the thread? It was thicker thread for the bobbin always. And part of the perk of that is that if you did gathering stitches, it's always easier to pull like a thicker fabric. I keep saying fabric, I mean thread. And then yeah, you want to keep them even. You don't want to pull one at a time and just take your time doing the zhuzhing. I always try to rush through this stuff and it never makes things look nice. Where I am actually tremendously proud of how the gathering came out on this. Okay, yeah, you can see that the sleeve head, like basically the shoulder part of the sleeve, it gets this kind of shaping going. That's more three-dimensional. It just lets the fabric fall differently and I really like how this looks. Okay, as for attaching it, the way I like to do this is find that center notch, which is like the shoulder seam notch. I pin that in place at first and then I work either side from the edge in. So like from the side seam in towards the center because that bottom third on each side is gonna be nice and flat. So I start pinning, just lining up things very evenly. I'm not pulling on the bodice or sleeve layer. I'm just gently attaching them together, right sides facing. And then we're gonna pin past that back and front notch that indicates which direction the sleeve needs to go. And then we're gonna hit our gathering notch. And this is where for me, I start pulling some gathers out from the center because you can see there's some slack on the bodice side and we want these to both end up the same length so that like they lay flat. So yeah, this is the part that I find easier to like bunch up more to start with and then let it out as you go. You know, just running my thumb along it, A, because it feels nice. I very much like that 
textural experience but also it just helps kind of get everything nice and even and then repeat the process on the other side of the sleeve and then do everything on the other sleeve entirely also I love when I get to pin sleeves into place when the side seams of the bodice haven't been attached and it's all laying flat I hate doing what's called like inset sleeves where the hole is closed here and you just you just have to fight with stuff more and I don't like it and I think it looks cleaner having the underarm and side seam done at the same time which is exactly what you do after you have sewn the sleeves in. I also search the seam allowances after each step. Oh also right when sewing that sleeve in you're stitching between those two gathering rows and one of the more satisfying parts of this whole process is once you have that stitch done attaching the sleeve to the bodice you know you inspect it you check and make sure there's no like giant puckers or anything like that and you're happy with how everything's gathered it all looks symmetrical even whatever then you can pull the gathering stitches out and it is just very satisfying when you get like the whole thing at once and i really prefer sewing the sleeve in with the gathered side on top just so you can see everything and then if there is stuff that's slanted if they start to get uneven if you see a pucker it's way easier to see that stuff from the side that the gathers are on okay and then i closed up the side seam through the underarm and then the bodice was all done which leaves us with the skirt which could not have had easier instructions because this is a knit there's no closures going in here no side zips no button plackets none of that shit so you just sew the front and back together at the side seams give that a surge and then attach to the bodice it can be a little tricky finagling this kind of thing so you can get it right sides together so you're attaching the top of the skirt to the bottom of the bodice but one of them needs to be right side out and the other one needs to be inside out so like sometimes my brain takes a second to like picture what needs to happen so because the bodice is smaller i like to flip that right side out and then hang the skirt like over it though the bodice does have like these little tendrils hanging down and I wasn't sure like where to tuck them out of the way but it ended up being less of an issue than I thought I typically go with like slightly bigger thing on the outside because it's less fabric mushed up underneath and I'm less likely to catch something I shouldn't be when I'm stitching that waist seam together Ooh, and I'm a little smarty pants because when I did the side seams of my skirt I played a little bit of good old thread chicken where I wasn't sure if I had enough bobbin thread to finish that side seam thankfully I did but then I went to the serger and like started double checking the instructions and like my brain went on to other things so that when I came back to the machine I have absolutely run out of bobbin thread gone to do something else before replacing it coming back and sewing and then realizing that the bobbin's still empty but I paid attention this time I also take notes as I go most recently in this cute as hell notebook that Sarah made me with her own hands I love it so much I don't know what material this is but it feels very nice like the fabric's nice and thick and by fabric I definitely mean paper but yeah all the notes for my recent videos have been scribbled in here I get some little diagrams and stuff and then I also cross out as I read through the notes so yes it's kind of like a sew along with me sewing diary and not full-on tutorials that I like to do here it's kind of like a craft with me hang but the reason I can remember all the steps involved and my thoughts about it as I was doing them because I film all that stuff separately I don't write a script but I have like bullet points of the whole process so it helps me stay on track and it makes it so much easier sewing the thing that I'm working on when I'm not stopping to talk to the camera every time and also I'd be facing away trying to explain things and that would change the volume of what I was saying and I'd be sitting different distances from the camera so that also affected the sound I do have my mic on today because I have new editing program and I'm trying some things out so we'll see yeah, if you have thoughts on any of the upgrades or like anything that I haven't upgraded or not even upgraded but just could do differently or have been doing differently and you've noticed or not noticed I would appreciate feedback if you have any or maybe nobody noticed and that's also okay I actually don't mind that because then it's not like what the fuck is she trying to do <laughs> if it hasn't been jarring any of the updates I've been making that's kind of good I think okay anyway now that I've given myself a bunch of credit for remembering to fill my bobbin before continuing to sew things together once I had the basic seam done for this I didn't surge this part because I wanted to do a test fit and I figure the main issue I have on dresses is the length and the waist because I didn't know where this was gonna hit on me not quite empire waist but not quite high waist I wanted to give a quick test fit before I did all the finishing stuff because those are my least favorite steps and if I hate the dress to the point that I don't feel like doing those I certainly don't want to have wasted the time just before I whole last this thing I wanted to check my process so as far as the fit this thing is so comfortable I've just been wearing it for the rest of the day since I put it together I always wash the fabric when it first comes into the house just so I don't forget to do it before I start working on something and on and honestly I just put the fabric in with my other laundry because if the fabric I've bought can't handle being washed with my regular laundry 
I don't want a garment made out of it. I don't even separate my lights and darks. Granted, most of my clothes are on the darker side because I sweat too much for like a pale yellow top, let alone white. I can't trust myself with white shirts. Absolutely not. Trying to eat with these hands and zero depth perception or hand-eye coordination, that is asking to ruin my clothing. Anyway, as I tried it on that first time, it definitely sat a little higher than I was expecting, although having worn it for a little while, I don't, I don't super mind, but I was trying to figure out where the lengthening would even happen, and then thankfully, it occurred to me, there's gotta be a line for this on the pattern. Cause this has to be a common alteration. Like everyone has different proportion torsos versus legs. Everything on me is long, so. But cause it's a bodice shape I've never done. I wasn't quite sure where the line was, but I, ha I had a guess. But thankfully when I checked the pattern, where that line was, was what my gut was telling me was right. I felt it in my soul, which feels nice. Cause that means I'm getting better at sewing that I can kind of figure that stuff out without someone else having to tell me to do it. Like the troubleshooting is the part that I want to continue getting better at and have gotten better at. Some of it's like instinct, but it's also just having done a lot of different things. This is not so dissimilar from lengthening the twist front bodice that I did a couple weeks ago, which also had some weird boob stuff going on. So it took some finagling and I didn't necessarily get it right the first time, but I, I still got there in the end. I feel like being able to do some creative problem solving is helpful. That being said, it's also right on the pattern. I'm trying to be better about accessing my resources, which often means not just depending entirely on myself to get a thing done where like the pattern I paid for and printed out is trying to assist me. It's right there. It's It's got its heart open to aid me in my quest to lengthen this bodice. And uh, I did ignore it at first and then was like, ah, let's double check the thing before we make some regrets. Also, it was not until rereading over my notes that I realized I definitely forgot to surge because I tried it on and then when I took it off, I did all the finishing steps, but I remembered eventually. As for finishing steps, I surged the raw edge of the sleeve. Well, sleeves, cause there's two of them. I happen to have two arms and then the skirt hem, basically all the edges that weren't attached to other things. Now the neckline is still open, but that's where the little facing loop comes in. Well, it's not a loop yet. I had to sew the ends together and then it became a loop. But yeah, this is the biggest pattern alteration I'm gonna have to make when I try more of like a V-neck version of this, or even just like a deeper scoop is remeasuring that whole piece out once I alter the pattern. But I've altered facing so many times before. When I figured out how to do that, like I, I just noodled around enough with this dress that I had for a long time and never wore, but then I opened it up and fucking love wearing it now. And it was not as daunting as I thought. You're literally just tracing when you're making a facing pattern. So whatever you end up doing to the neckline, you just trace whatever that is and you make it happen. It's that easy. And I would like to practice my like V-neck pivots. Okay, anyway, so I picked a side of the facing to serge and then I stitched the raw edge right sides together to the entire neck opening with the seam that attached the ends of the loop at the center back. I kind of held the shoulder seams together of the bodice and then found the center point of the back that way, made a little notch. And then same thing with the loop. I held the ends I stitched together and I just found like the complete opposite end of that and notched there because that's going to line up with the front center seam. So just made pinning it all in evenly much easier having these extra little notches and I may just add that onto the pattern for myself because you can put whatever notes you want on your pattern. You can add stuff, you can ignore stuff. They're meant to help you make things so you make them work for you. Okay once the facing was done your girl even took the time and went whole ass professional on this project and broke out the twin needle. I haven't used it in so long that I forgot just how much it elevates stuff for me and like I am more excited to wear this dress because I did all of the twin needle stitching. Other than like ironing stuff, especially wovens, knits, it's less of an issue. But yeah, other than using my iron to like press seams at every step, using the twin needle to do some of my finishing is like the biggest help. It is so pleasing to my eyeballs, I assume to others. It's what I would expect to see on like a store-bought garment. Why wouldn't I put that kind of effort in for my own stuff? I'm worth the extra time. So yeah, and it was good practice. I hadn't used it in a hot minute. It's okay. It was still logged away in my brain. You do have to use a straight stitch and you use your longest stitch and you just don't backstitch. I do like to end my twin needle rows. Like I overlap the beginning and end of the stitching I'm doing so that those kind of tack each other down. I pull the tail of the bottom zigzag that happens and it kind of like 
tucks the two straight rows of stitching up top, those tails underneath, and then I tie those into a square knot. If there's any other steps you do to finish off a twin needle, let me know. But that's how I tackle it. So yeah, I did twin needle for tacking the facing down on the collar. For the sleeves, I just had that serged edge and tucked it under maybe like a quarter inch. And here's what it looks like from the underside. But yeah, then the whole thing was done and it was time to go outside and twirl. This thing is so comfortable. I have full movement in the arms. The waist is not as bothersome as I thought it was gonna be, being a little bit higher. It also has this perfect pleating situation that happens when I tie the sashes around. The only thing about a dress this style is when there's stuff tied in the back, I'm sitting in a chair. Like I'm very forward on my chair. Normally I'm like fully against the back of it, but cause there's a giant fucking bow on my back. I literally like bruise my spine when I wear shit like this, if I'm sitting in a chair with a back on it. Yeah. But the only thing is it, it's a little too short for some things where, I mean, I ran out to the grocery store in this immediately after finishing it because Listen, when you get a craving for Ben and Jerry's, you have to then go get Ben and Jerry's. But I always wear bike shorts under my skirts and dresses because I don't want to have to think about pulling it down all the time. Like, I don't want to be self-conscious about it. I'm an adventure lady and I don't want to be hindered in my adventuring by worrying about flashing someone. Even if I'm wearing tights, which, you know, are sheer so they don't have full coverage over things. I wear bike shorts over those both for opacity but also because it helps hold them up. I have found having a second layer over tights and leggings helps keep them around where they're supposed to be because otherwise I'm constantly having like MC hammer crotch and I do not like. I don't want to have to be adjusting all day. If you're interested in the lengths I went to acquire this pattern, let me tell you a story. So I was scrolling through the meme made May hashtag on Instagram and I saw this gorgeous dress with this wrap sash front situation and I couldn't figure out how it happened because certainly there's times I scroll through you know Pinterest Instagram whatever the internet at large people also send me a lot of links to things that they think I would like and I very much appreciate that because there's so much out there I can't see everything so having like curated posts come my way. I never mind getting sent stuff like that. Also, there's a Discord where that's exactly what that is meant for, is sharing all of that kind of stuff. Not catered to me, but like if you see something online that you like and want to talk about it, it's a great spot to do it. Just message me and I will send you an invite link. I am not tolerating any kind of trolls. We are bog trolls. We are a great community and I don't want shitty people infiltrating that so I don't have like a public link. You don't have to be part of like the Patreon or anything like that to join. All those folks voted to have it free for everybody so like let me know if you want to join and I'll make it happen. Anyway, saw this dress and specifically under that hashtag I knew like this person made this dress and thankfully it was from a pattern that was commercially available. Now the person that posted this photo of themselves in this dress is someone that lives in France and everything was in French and then I clicked the link to the website to find the pattern and wouldn't you know it? also everything in French. As previously stated, I'm very stubborn and was like, well, I guess I'm gonna take half a day to figure this out. I genuinely spent four or five hours working through this where I took a number of years of Spanish. Obviously I know they're different languages, but there are some words that are like close and knowing the context of those words getting used, I was able to fudge my way through like some basic stuff. And again, knowing patterns pretty well, I could tell like what was what part without having to read the label on each pattern piece. But I did make Google Translate my friend and I was using a Mozilla Firefox browser window where apparently in Chrome, there's a drop down option and like this comes up on my phone. I was looking at the same website and my phone was like, would you like us to translate this to English? Cause it looks like it's in French. None of that came up. And I specifically looked for it on my Mozilla Firefox browser. Now maybe there's an extension you can download. I'm sure there is cause they have extensions for everything on that browser, but it wasn't coming up and I just wanted to figure this out. I was just trying to think of like anything I could do. And then, you know, I just, copied and pasted a bunch of words back and forth between Google Translate and like a separate browser window, like that kind of back and forth. Cause I also didn't realize that you don't need a separate Google Translate app on your phone. I have an Android, it's like a Google Pixel 3 or something. It's old and it's not working very well, but it gets the job done and it has a very nice camera. Thing is, older versions of Android phones I have had, you need a separate app that you download for Google Translate. And I didn't have room to download any more apps and was like, Fuck it, I'll just use this browser window. I did figure out that the camera now automatically has a mode you can switch it to called Lens that lets you scan QR codes, scan fucking documents, and translate things that come up on the camera screen. At least now I know. I have figured it out now. Next time, it will be easier. But again, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time 
fudging my way through all of this and figuring out like how to buy it and making sure I converted it from euros to US dollars. Having that conversion done, there's an extra charge to it for different currencies if the website doesn't automatically like have that option available to switch. Like Etsy does it automatically. And additionally, I had to take my measurements in centimeters, which was not the end of the world. And I try to take my measurements before each project because bodies fluctuate. Another upside of knits, there's plenty of wiggle room. It's not super fitted. So you have more of a window in which that knit garment will fit your body, which is why I love it. And this is also why I still have t-shirts that I was wearing in high school. And I'm a person that is careening towards their mid thirties. So yeah, remeasured myself, did it in centimeters. That was kind of fun figuring out because it's not something I ever think to look at, but it's, it's interesting. So yes, lots of notes, lots of browser switching back and forth, translating stuff, going back to the website, making sure I paid for it with the right amount of money. And it was priced in the range I thought it would be. I think it turned out to be like, 750 or something with the like 20 cent currency conversion rate. It was as I went to the page that was like, great, your order is complete. Please check your email for, you know, further instructions, what have you. Because there was such little text on that page, obviously like I saw the header on everything, which was all French. And like, I didn't see any links to any other country website thing. Cause again, that's, that is the thing I looked for at the beginning was a different country website up top. Cause sometimes in the top corner, it's like the UK website or you want the US website. But that was like very top corner of the page. So I'm used to looking for that there. Well, wouldn't you know it after all of that is right after I finished taking my measurements and making sure I was buying the right size pattern and got the email where all of the instructions and pattern pieces were in French. I saw the footer of the page for the first time and noticed a little drop down menu that said, international. I'm not going to try to do a French accent, but wait, you know what? Saw a little US flag on there and was like, God fucking damn it. And I had to laugh. Normally I would get really, really mad about that kind of thing, but I wasn't overly frustrated with the whole process. It just felt like a difficult project to challenge myself with. And I kind of had fun looking through it. And I learned some French terms for sewing. It is also specific jargon. So like trying to Google translate some of the words, it was like, this word also means something else and you couldn't possibly mean not this more common phrase. So we're only going to give you this definition of it. A million eggs on my face, finding out there was a US website. Problem was my purchase was through the French one and I didn't even have an account on the US one, even though I made a login on the French one. It was fine. I'll, I'm still getting French emails from this website, which I, like I find charming now. But after this realization, like that first one was like, oh, what have I done? So the English website, I believe is called Makerist. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. But yeah, I made a TikTok describing the events of my day and both my wonderful, brilliant sister was like, here are some options from someone that's very good at tech support that you could have tried and had you asked someone for help with this could have supplied you with this information. And then another friend of mine was literally born in France and didn't occur to me the fact that he's fluent in speaking and reading French. But you know, in all of the therapy and learning about myself I've been doing, I did have a good long talk with my therapist about this specific incident and was like, why, why do I make things so hard for myself? Like, how do, how do I not do this? Cause this could have been a seven minute process between finding the dress pattern and checking out had I asked either of those two people for help, had I put it out to anybody, but it didn't even occur to me. I was like, what are the resources available to me? And nothing else had come up other than I know Google Translate and I vaguely know some Spanish words. Let's fucking figure this out. I got a measuring tape that does metric. Great. And we did discover it's just from a lifetime of having to find workarounds for things because the standard explanation of something didn't work for my brain a lot of the time. And I would still get to the solution, but I'd have this just buck wild workaround. That was a lot more work, but I'd, I'd still find a way to get there. Like I am very good at creative problem solving. Like I will always give myself credit for that because it's something I've had to do for myself just because my brain's wired a little different. And it's so helpful knowing that now. And it's not just me being an idiot. Like I just used to think I was very stupid and that's why I couldn't figure this stuff out in the easy way. And like, had to put so much work in because I, I would see other kids in school and just other people in my adult life not having to work this hard to do stuff. Not everything, of course, but like a plenty of things. Boy, howdy, have all of you seen me work through finding the most overly complicated way to go about a thing. And then maybe by the end of it, me realizing like, oh, had I just done this, this would have happened and I didn't have to do all this work. But sometimes it's some of y'all commenting and being like, oh, when I do that kind of project, I do this. And I'm like, 
can't believe the things that I have learned from y'all and just talking with people about stuff and I think the main thing I need to work on because it's all so specific to the context of the situation right as far as like what direction to seek help in but I think asking for help from other people in general is not something I do very often I have for most of my life thought I'm not worth burdening that person and taking up any of their time where the joy I feel when friends have like had me over for the weekend and asked me to bring my sewing machine so we can work on a project together and a lot of it is them having me show them how to do stuff or just helping them in general or like them even just giving me the idea and I'll make the thing and like hang out with me while we're doing it. I love doing that and I don't even view that as like them asking me for help with something. It's always like great we have a specific thing to do while we hang out. I very much enjoy having like activities to do with my friends and if it's something that I know how to do really well and love, like sewing's my favorite thing in the world, why wouldn't I be pumped to talk about and demonstrate and share with other people that I love? Just another, I guess, act of self-care to put into practice is leaning a bit on people that are intentionally in my life that I am also more than happy when they lean on me for things. I'm just glad that we're friends and we get to spend time together, have an excuse to hang out, because that's literally all those sewing projects end up being. This is what this whole channel's about, is we get to make a thing and hang out every week. Okay, so now that I have exposed myself and how uh, I have a hard time figuring things out in an easy method, we're learning, we're growing, we're progressing. <laughs> I would also love to give a huge, huge thank you to people that I have asked for help and we'll float it out there that it's because of everyone over on Patreon that I get to do this. If you would like to join, there are a couple physical perk tiers. Most of the non-physical ones, they're the lower tiers, obviously, but there's like this beautiful scroll of everyone's names. You'll get to join that crew, and I do make some posts over there. I try not to overload it because I find the Patreon pages that I am part of, I get overwhelmed. I just, I just want them to do their thing. I don't need the updates from them. And I know many of you have told me the same thing. If I'm unable to do a live stream once a month that you don't like hold it against me, which I do appreciate. But also I understand if you are the person that does want those like very specific tiers. Again, I, I do have two physical tiers and like I, I never miss those. Those always go out. So yeah, there. Are you proud of me? I am uncomfortable doing this, but asking for help if if you would like to, because that's the other thing, like, no one's doing it because they don't want to, so I shouldn't have a hard time accepting it, but that's okay. Even if younger me didn't have that going for them, current and future me is only going to have it get better, so that's worthwhile. And yeah, thank you to every one of you for hanging out through this video. Really thought this one was going to be shorter for some reason, but I think that with literally every project, and it never is. So most of the videos that I seek out are longer format ones, so I don't know if y'all have a preference with the shorter versus longer version. And if you made it this far, I, I would guess that you enjoy some of your time here at least, so just thank you all. I appreciate the company and I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Top of skirt to the bottom of the shirt. Uh.